Hello. How are you? I'm back. Yeah, I know. I just did a chatty and I'm doing another chatty. But no, I'm not going to do a chatty. Get ready with me because I done duty. Yes, this is more of a classy cake. I went a little crazy. I've got Leanne on here. I've got don't care purple hair. I've got a little bit of Nona kind of run up the center. I don't know if you can actually see it. Put lashes on. Not very well, but they're on. And I've used some stuff that I've gotten in recently and have not laid hand to. Now I've got a couple of elf things here and there and some stuff. And then I got out. Oh, mercy. This Dr. Brandt primer that came in my Ipsy bag. I tried the the second level of Ipsy for one month, and they sent me a primer that smells like Pledge Furniture Polish. And I don't really know anyone here in this little town who would appreciate it. My daughter-in-law is not about scented stuff regardless. It's been opened. I messed with it, you know, when I tried it on the first time. And, you know, so it's not unvirus related. You know, it's, it's been viride with whatever I have, if I have anything. If nothing else, it's just skin bacteria, <laughs> basic stuff. So I've decided in my version of a project pan. I'm just going to use it up, get it over with, get it out of here. Yeah. Get it out of here. Oh, God, it stinks. Anyway, because I don't do things like reviews necessarily, I'm going to start limiting my purchases of different types of products. I like playing with eyeshadow. I like collecting eyeshadow. But I don't like collecting foundations. I don't review foundations. I don't get enough different foundations to be able to really compare them. Um, I'd be as likely to tell you that I like a foundation that I picked up as not, regardless of any other foundation I have. So I'm going to start, you know, if I use up a foundation, unless it's one that I absolutely adore and use 90% of the time without even a thought, I'm not going to re repurchase it. It's like, I like this Maybelline stuff. The Dream Urban Cover. It's a gorgeous color. It's got some great coverage. But it's not the first thing I reach for. More than likely, the first thing I reach for is either going to be the ELF or the AOA. And I'm going, this is a little expensive to just be left sitting around. So I'm going to use it because I paid for it. And things like the concealers. I've got about half a dozen different concealers. And some of them are okay. Some of them I'm not so thrilled with. But, I mean, I reach for the ELF and the AOA. And the other ones are going to get finished and put away, not repurchased. I am down at this point to only keeping two mascaras. I've got one CoverGirl mascara and I've got this one Clean Color mascara. I love this Clean Color mascara because it's got one of those funky little Christmas tree brushes. 
and I like the way it works. I really do. And I will probably continue to get that. The CoverGirl mascara also works, and for a different eye a different eyelash effect, I prefer that one. Neither one of them is terribly expensive, and they work just fine. I will probably continue to keep that too. I've got, heaven help me, the world's pile back here of lip product, lipsticks, lip glosses, lip pencils, which we all know I don't use much anyway. Um, I don't see myself really expanding this collection. In fact, I can see myself allowing it to start to dwindle some because there's just too much. It's like the lipstick that I put on to go with this look is called Hot Dish. It's from LA Colors. I got it at Dollar Tree. You know, it's not something that is horrendously expensive to replace. And there's a bunch of these that I just don't really pick up. There's some of them I pick up and look at it and go, no, put it back. There's a lot of that going on over here. I have a few colors that I like. <laughs> now, with the eyeshadows, I will continue to pick up more eyeshadow palettes. But I'm limiting myself at this point that unless I've put a serious dent in the ones I already have, I'm not getting a new one unless the colors like just, you know, they dry up, cake up, whatever, and are unrecoverable. It's kind of like with my cream drawer down here. I've got a pile, a basket full of cream products of all make, manner, and description, bronzers, contours, highlighters, eyeshadow sticks, eyeshadow pots, eyeshadows with a wand, and like I said, eyeshadow pots, and cream blushes, and cream highlight, and all that lovely stuff. And I need to, there's a couple of them that I've gotten pretty much use out of, and that's the little elf palettes that I held up first. They're little six pan palettes, and they've got some gorgeous stuff in it, but even at that, I don't use them as often as I really should for the number of pieces I have in that drawer. So those are going to be going also into the rotate. It means I'm probably going to be fully made up for, for doing laundry, but hey, it's fun. But I need to use the stuff. Otherwise, it's completely wasted. And I like playing with makeup, so why not do it? The creams I will keep using until they're either used up or dry out so bad they are not recoverable. Same kind of thing as with the other makeups. I am going to use them because I paid for them. I'm going to use them. Like, the eyelashes are going to be a little bit trickier. I've got a few sets that I can use that will fit behind my glasses. The ones I have on right now will not fit behind my glasses. I will spend the entire day wiping the back of my lenses with the lashes. 
And let me tell you, it's annoying because then it pulls on your eyes. And, and yeah, if I'm doing filming, I will probably wear lashes a little more often because I've got them. I should use them. Um, face powders and, you know, both loose and pressed. I've got tons of, but not as many tons as I used to have. I've got this, which I barely touched, you know, the ever popular, forever used Cody Airspun in Naturally Neutral. That one's going to take years. I've got one of the loose Maybelline pots in Light 01. I've gotten a small dent in that. I've got Press Powder Elf. Press Powder Elf. I've got Translucent and Soft Light in AOA Perfect Set. I've got magnetic eyelashes. And the, th the thing that's really scary, though, is I've got this one drawer here that I will take pictures with my phone to show you what's in here that is all blushes, bronzers, and highlights. I've got way more, and a lot of it is because of the Ipsy bags. I mean, I've got pixie coming out my ears here, guys. And a little ciate. There's another pixie. Phase zero. I got Laura Geller from, from um, no, no, because we did a friend mail. I sent her home cooked stuff, like like rhubarb pie filling and pickles and that kind of stuff. And she sent me makeup. Boy, howdy! That was one of the best friends mails ever, and I mean that. And then I've got bronzers coming out my ears. Again, most of them are from having the Ipsy bag. It's like I've got this little one from Wander, Costa del Rey, which is a nice light shade for my cook, uncooked chicken face. And then I end up with things like the Pacifica with the blushes and bronzers or blushers and highlights. And I've got two of that type. And I've got Ophra that came in from Ipsy. This is Star Island. And just tons, tons. A little tart blush bronzer. And all manner of little highlighters from just about everybody. Got Colored Rain and Shenab and Nomad and Space Case and K Boss and Estate. I've got two colored grains in here that are all highlighters. Got another Wander. I mean, I have got stuff. And then I've got the palette versions. Looks like this one is the Elf Luminizing palette. That one. I have several. And then there's the Elf. Fresh Flawless. No, I don't like Elf at all. No, you can tell. 
Okay. Elf Duet Santa Lucia. A lot of the rest of the elf is sitting over here where I used it this for today. Bronzer. Another matte blush duo. Heaven help me another pressed powder. Let's see, Profusion Luminizer 2 highlights. One of them, this one's the Aurora highlighter. Two of them, when it first, when it got here, were busted. All kinds of funky. And another elf. This is one of the other bronzer palettes. And then there's this one. This is the Charlotte Tilbury face palette that I won from Miss Pamela when she did her giveaway. And then I've got the new face palette that just came in from um, Laura Geller that came in in the latest Ipsy. Well, my June Ipsy with, that was the larger version palette. And yeah, I've got massive amounts of blush and bronze and highlight and I'm going I don't need to buy another one I don't the first three drawers I'll like I said I'll take some pictures with my phone because you guys are on a stand I'm not going to move you right now but I've got three is it three or is it four it's four drawers in this one little cabinet over here that is full of palettes and small, loose, single shades that come in Ipsy's. And, and yeah, I got palettes that won't even fit in the drawers just because they're too big, like the Zodiac right there that I haven't used yet. And the Profusion Sultry right there, and then the Profusion Pro Pigments. They don't even really fit in the drawers unless I bury them under other things. And, you know, I've got the hot chocolate up there and the earth and ocean up there from Elf. And some of that will fit in the drawers. A lot of the stuff is not, the drawers are not very deep. So a lot of them I end up having to bury because they are too tall just a tad too tall in some cases. There's some of them that's literally less than a quarter inch too tall, which is annoying, to go in the drawers. And I've got my little minis up here. Yeah, here's the Laura Geller Central Park, which has got four eye shades and a blush and a highlight. And none of them work. They're like, the eye shades are dusty, and you got a pile of them to get them to build up to anything useful. But I've all, in this drawer, I've got all my little things, like one of the ones from, from Ipsy, the cello, the little four-pan cello. And the little auto bomb. And Naked Cosmetics. And again with the Nomad. And Kaleidos. 
and Emmy and Rivers and the dogs are barking because the new puppies that my son and daughter-in-law have are barking at the neighbors were working on that but every time the babies bark my two dogs which are considerably senior decide they have to try and protect the puppies even though the, the youngest of the puppies is bigger than my largest dog she's part mastiff she was got we got big breeds in the basement because they are being trained as service animals for family members that are in that section of the house. And being as my son and daughter-in-law have a thing for anime, one of the dogs is named Genji, the other one is named Karumi. And I'm going, really guys? Really? Anyway, one of the dogs is part blue tick hound. So when he decides to have a hissy fit about something, you know it's a hound. You know. There is no doubt in your little mind that you are listening to a hound going ba woo woo woo. <coughs> Got that hound howl going on. Anyway. Yeah, the little the little dog that's like still really a baby. She's just now cutting the adult teeth. Feed that dog ice cubes and frozen carrots, please. It'll make her gums feel better. And she won't chew on other, other things. But she is adorable. She is solid black. And she is part mastiff. So she's really wrinkly around the face. She is so cute. But she's now, I think she's at five months, and she's now bigger than my 13-year-old dog. When she first got here, she was still a lap puppy. Now she's a lap full puppy. <laughs> anyway, that is, yeah, I know, it's short. But, especially short for me. But this is what I am intending on doing. I mean, I mentioned this in the last video where I was talking about, I'm always bitching about my, pardon my French, about my budget. And this is part of trying to get a better control on the budget again. Because like I said, I, I tried. I did. I tried. When I first started this, which is how I got such a, huge collection of some things is I tried to do the review stuff but I could only really compare inexpensive makeup to inexpensive makeup by brand and it's not really that much of a comparison when you're talking about same price point now I have a lot of fun going through my stash when somebody comes out with a new eye palette and going, oh, look, I have that color here and that color here and that color over here and go, okay, I don't need to pay 125 bucks for somebody's fancy palette because I got the colors. I have to like play mix and match a little bit, but I got the colors. It, it, yeah, we're good. That kind of comparison, I would have fun with. And I may try doing it more often. As more new stuff comes out, I'm going to have to get better at knowing exactly what colors I've got where and really put some work into it. It won't. Be, it, it's not going to be responding the day of a release. Okay? Just, no. Not going to be responding the day of a release. It's not going to happen. I don't get forewarning any more than, than, than the regular consumer population does. Now, people like 
Raw Beauty Christy and Smoky Glow and Jen Loves Reviews who have collaborations. I'm not touching their palettes. I am not going to find a way to dupe off those palettes. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to find a way to dupe off palettes like the Classy Cake and any of the other indie brands. I'm not doing it. Big manufacturers with really, really, really ugly price points, hot minute. Because I'm not going to buy their stuff anyway. I don't have that kind of money. But if I'm doing a collaboration with a friend on this channel and they want to use one of those expensive palettes, I will sit here and dupe it out and do the same kind of process that they do, whether it's a bingo or pick your shades or whatever. As long as they don't mind that it's not head to head with an identical palette but it has the same vibe and color story as close as possible we'd be good because i've got i've got a small collection of color pop singles that i've put into a couple of palettes and i've got a small collection of aoa studio singles that i've put in a couple of magnetics and you know, I've got a lot of colors that I've got no problem trying to put together the same color stories. Hush puppies. Shush. 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 You know, when, when the cremated palette first came out, I reached into my drawers over here and I pulled out a couple of things and I said, nah, I'm good. It didn't take a lot of pulling to get there. It really didn't. It was pretty quick. Because you want some grays and like a shimmery black. This is the BYS Smoky palette. Some of the topes and such. This is the sea color feverish palette. So there's some of your topes. I don't need somebody's big fancy palette that costs way tons of money. Because more than likely, between all of these, I've got things like that bronze palette that just came out. There's bronzes in this one. There's bronzes in those. The pink palette that's coming, the cherry palette. Would you like to know how many pinks I own? Anyway. It can be done. For every palette on the planet, no, probably not. But that's the kind of thing I'm going to start trying to do to use up some of this stuff so that I've got a more curated collection of things that I'm actually going to use on a regular basis. Since I'm not reviewing all the rest of this face stuff, 
I don't need to keep switching up my foundations and my primers and this I just get the ones I want and the ones I know I'm going to use and the ones I know don't break me out and go from there and then see what I can do to do fancy palettes out of my collection anyway that's where we're going that and maybe occasionally I'll show you how I do how I make jewelry made this one the other day Or maybe I'll tell you about the books I'm having to read for class. I've got to finish To Kill a Mockingbird, rather timely considering. And then I've got a novel called The Rule of the Bone. I've got to get through two kind of dry novels in a total of eight weeks. Yeah, buddy. Good thing I read fast. But that's where we at. That and noisy puppies. But I do a lot of other things. If I could find a way to set up a camera quickly in the kitchen, I could show you some of my cooking. I could show you bread baking. Now, once we get a few more pieces in, I'll probably be showing you with my face all done up, sitting on a little chair next to a river, holding a fishing pole. Yes, I will. <laughs> I'll just take my phone and show you what I'm fishing <laughs> and where I'm fishing and what I'm doing. Because once, you know, there are plenty of places where the old man and I can go and just set up chairs and there's not bunches of other people around. I just sit there and, and soak some artificial bait because I got this thing about using real bait. I'm not going to dangle real bait and I'm not going after fish that I'm not intending to eat unless it doesn't meet you know, the, the requirements under the fishing license. Those I will very quickly put back. I'm not going to stand there and show them off and go, look at this little bitty teeny fish. I'm just going to throw it back in the water. It's like, I am not a sports fisher person. I'm one of those people that wants to go out, drop a line, and come home with dinner. I don't just go out to grab fish and back. Not my thing. Anyway, I keep telling myself I'm going to sign off and that this was going to be fast and I keep thinking of something else to say. Yes, I ramble. Anyhow. Oh, in case some of you have wondered about some of the lines on my face and up in my hair and that kind of thing, I wear a CPAP to sleep. I can't breathe. So I have a CPAP on, and this is lines that get dug into my face and into my hair by the head harness that holds the little mask unit on. I got lucky. I got one that just barely comes up over my nose and around this way. But that means I've got this V-shaped, almost a Nike symbol, carved into the side of my face on both sides where that mask harness comes in. Now, I like the mask that I've got because I can wear my glasses and see a TV screen or I can read. So if I'm reading in bed, it doesn't get in the way like some of the ones that come way up here. Yeah. My husband's got one of the ones that comes way up here on, on the bridge of his nose. I'd have been in real trouble if I'd have had one like that after that fall I took because this spot was one of the worst hit because that's my glasses, the ones I was wearing at the time, just fit real tight here. And it's still sore. <laughs> yeah, we think I probably cracked something in there, but 
with a crack, all they're going to do is look at you, pat you on the head, and say, here, take some aspirin or something. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Before they shut us back down again, we took a quick trip through the thrift store. I got a few tops. I'll probably show those off, too. Anyway. See you later. Be good. And don't forget, black lives will always matter. Just because time has passed, that does not mean that this is over. Not ever.